If you regularly run live sessions, you might have asked yourself, is there an alternative to Zoom that's actually worth checking out? Well, recently I came across an option that I think has some real potential. So today we are going to talk about sessions for your meetings or webinars. I will share sort of what initially drew me in and what I like, what's on my wish list, and who I think that this could be great for. And let's dive into what initially attracted me because off the bat, this is, this is what got my interest. It was the interactive agendas. So Sessions is a browser-based app and it has this interactive agenda where you can not only pre-populate an agenda that everyone could see or you could keep to yourself, but you can actually preload files, slides, PDFs, websites, apps and tools. And then as soon as you click on that agenda item, it launches into it without you having to stop and share your screen. So let's take a look at a live session. Full disclosure, this has been going on. <laughs> I've had this running for a while, but here you can see down the left side, I have my agenda. I'll also note I've got my camera turned off because I want to avoid an infinite loop with Ecamm. On this agenda, I've got my introduction, use cases, demo. I've assigned an amount of time for this. And here you can see I actually have speaker notes so I can open and close my speaker notes. Let's see an example of this preloading. So in this second item, I've preloaded a PDF. And if I click on number two to go to that item, you will actually see it just switches automatically. I did not have to prompt my screen share. And if I hide this agenda, I can now control this, this PDF. Now, I only have one page here, but if you had multiple pages, you could control that down the side. And no, your audience will not see that. They will only see the slide that is being shown. I'm going to close this for a moment just to make that a little smaller. So I have this use case here. If we look at our next agenda item, which either I can show the agenda to launch it, or if I hover here, it will show me the previous and the next one, and I can just click next. And the next one, I've actually preloaded a website. So if you add a link, it will show up in an iframe. But as you can see at the top, everyone can interact with this page. Then if I go to my next item, which I have pre-set up some breakout rooms, then you will see these breakout rooms visible. As the host, I'm going to see all the participants in the main room and I can actually drag them to the room. But as a participant, you would see the two breakout rooms, which you can rename in advance. You can add a description. You can also add additional rooms if you like. So all of this is pre-populated. Why do I care so much about an agenda? Frankly, I think one of the reasons people dread virtual meetings is because most of them lack structure. It's kind of the wild west. We don't know what to expect. We don't know when they're gonna end. A lot of people go off on tangents and it just, it's not a great experience for most people. But there is a subset of people for whom not having structure is a genuine source of anxiety. Like I can't stress this enough that there are people that truly feel anxious when they don't know what's going to happen, when there is no agenda, when it's just kind of a free for all. That is really stressful for a lot of people. And so even if that's not you, it's really helpful to appreciate that. Now, regardless, I think hosts should be thoughtful about these things. What are you going to do? How long are you going to spend? You should communicate that with your audience. I think that's a sign of respect. But being able to just share an agenda and show everyone what's happening, I think is a really great option. So that is what initially drew me in. But what are some of the other things that I like? Well, let's take a look down here at the bottom right corner. You will see this, these, what's called widgets. I'm gonna move this over here. So we have a participants panel. So you can see all the participants right now, it's just me. You can also see the chat, which is traditional, but also if you send a file in the chat, it will show up. All the files will be collected together, which is a nice feature. There is a simple poll option. You can add a poll on the fly with single choice, multiple choice, and free text. You can start it, show the results, and then you can add another one afterwards. The Q&A. This to me, this is one of my favorite widgets. I hate searching a chat to find a question. So to be able to have people ask a question in here, so I have, if I say, what do you like about sessions? I can have this be anonymous if I like, or I can show my name. If I click send, people can also upvote these. So if a lot of people like the question, that can help you as a host to identify where to focus. When it's time to answer it, if I answer the question live, it pops up. Well, let's move my name. 
I can now answer this question and everyone can see what question I'm answering because you know you've been on a call where you either got sidetracked or maybe you joined late and you have no idea what's going on. This allows everyone to be on the same page and when you're done, you can click done and it moves over into the answered column. Then people can see what's been answered. I love that. I think having that as a core feature is a game changer. Notes, this is private, so I can take these notes on my own, no one can see them. Every participant has the option to capture their own notes. I can sync these with Evernote or Notion. It's a little bit clunky, I'm just not gonna get into that. Takeaways, this is shared. So everyone can see the same takeaways and I really like this. Not only can you share what are some of the key points, maybe next actions, make sure everyone is on the same page before you leave the session together, you can also send the takeaways by email. Also, I will share, share very soon where else you can get them. And then finally, there is a transcript option, so you can start a transcription for your meeting. Now, I alluded to takeaways being found somewhere else. That leads me to the next thing that I really appreciate about sessions, and I'm going to switch to another tab. This is the sessions window. You can see the menu down the side, the home, memory, calendar, etc. I'm on the memory tab. This is where all of your past meetings will show up. And let's take a look at yesterday. I did a test session with a friend of mine, and we, you can see the agenda. You can see everything that I attached for the testing. You can see how long I planned and how long I actually took. And you can see analytics for how long did it last, how many people were there, messages, etc. You can also see the takeaways here. I can also see the private notes. I can see the Q&A. We answered one question. I can see the chat. I can see polls. All of this is available, including the recording. So I can play the recording here. And these three dots right beside, I can decide who has access. Is this only moderators? Is this all the attendees who were there? So if you want everyone to access the takeaways, the poll, the, all of the files that were shared, this to me is a really nice feature. And then also who can see the agenda and you can delete a session. So you get a little bit of control. This is the memory session. I think that this is a great option. And with that, What's my wish list? Because there's always a wish list. And I want to acknowledge that I know the company is actively working on making improvements, making upgrades. They are listening to user feedback. So as of today, early September 2023, this is my wish list. So the first thing on my wish list is about speaker view. So I'm going to go back to this session here and let's go to the Q&A. This is, yes, my camera is off, but this is the maximum size of the speaker view, and I do have this on spotlight. If I stop the spotlight, I'm still in speaker view. It takes a moment, but it's gonna switch just to speaker view, and I'm still not taking up the whole screen. And in fact, if there's only two of you, it, speaker and gallery look identical. But if I do decide to spotlight myself, this is the largest that you're getting. And as someone who uses a virtual camera, the virtual camera works and the quality of the video is high enough that I think the virtual camera with graphics can work well here. But why is there so much white space? So I would love to be able to get the speaker view bigger to be able to maximize it. That is the number one thing on my wish list. The second thing on my wish list is slides. So if you were to upload slides, for example, here I've got, this is a PDF, but I've tested out with a couple of different slideshows. And I think it looks really nice to have this pre-populated and just to be able to launch right into your slides. But if you are someone who has animations, your animations won't play because it's not playing from your slide software, it's playing from sessions. And it's possible it might break the font. So in my keynote presentation that I uploaded, it did not have the font that I used in Keynote, so it looked bad. <laughs> now, I did export a PDF. The PDF looks great. It keeps the font, it keeps the design, but it doesn't show any animations. So if you are running a slideshow, you can do the traditional thing and go to down to the bottom, click Share Screen, and then choose Window. And right now, I actually do have a Keynote presentation that is 
in presentation mode in a window so I could share that and that would work. So it is similar to what you would normally do. You would just launch the screen share. You also have the option to share your entire screen. The other thing that's on my wish list is that I would like also, if we go to the demo, so the demo is a website using iframe. This means everyone can interact with this. So I could go and click on features and I could go to another page if I want to and no one else can see what I'm doing as the host. This means that everyone can interact with a website on their own freely. They don't just watch someone else and there are definitely cases where I could see that being really useful. But if you're ever leading a demo, this is not going to work. If you were actually wanting people to see your screen, you would want to share your screen, share the website, and then everyone sees what you're doing. Because even on a recording, which I learned yesterday, <laughs> this me going to this other page won't work. You'll just see the website in the recording and you'll see nothing else happen. And I wish that was just a little bit more clear because I had to find that out by watching the recording and I would have rather known before. My next wish list is polls. I just, I would love to be able to save them in advance and I'd like to load more than one. Like most software, I think this will get better with time, but right now the polls are just extremely basic and I'd love a little bit, I'd love to set them up in advance. <laughs> um, breakout rooms. Breakout rooms, if we go to this one, I like that you can set them up in advance and you can, and you can adjust the name, the description, but there is a little clunky step. When someone joins a room, they're stopped and prompted to confirm their name before they go. And then if they change rooms, the same thing happens. They're prompted again. So it's just a little bit of friction. And for a product that is trying to be a little bit more seamless and save you time by pre-populating things in your agenda, that to me is just a little bit of a mismatch there. Okay, the last thing that I wanna get into is after the meeting and that's the recording. And I took a screenshot of a recording that I took earlier today. This is what the recording looks like in speaker view. I don't understand why there's so much white space. This to me is strange and I could not find anywhere in the settings to adjust it. I thought, oh, maybe my recording settings are off. Couldn't find anything to change this. So this is my number one. If I worked at sessions, I would say, please have speaker view be maximized. I don't know why there's so much white space. Now, when you're sharing a screen, this is fine. This is what the recording looks like for sharing the screen. As you can see, you don't see the sidebar on the left for the host to be able to navigate through the pages, which is great. You only see what is shown to the audience. So I love that. But the white space around speaker view, I just don't understand. All right, <laughs> who is this for? So I would say looking through my lens, which is virtual presentations, people who are running live sessions, I think this would be really great if you are someone who regularly runs sessions, especially where you're answering questions. So if you are a teacher or educator in some way, having that separated Q&A is amazing. And I think showing everyone, it does such a big favor for everyone watching because everyone can see the question that you're answering. Also, if it is something a little more casual, like an office hours, a Q and A session, then I'm less, I care less about the recording quality. Whereas if I was running maybe a paid workshop where it's going to have a high, I want a high quality recording, that to me is not gonna fly. But if I'm running a membership, let's say, and I'm regularly running office hours, Q and A, I think this would be a great tool, not only for the structure, because I love the agenda, <laughs> but also for the Q&A and the takeaways. So there's some really great features that I think, that's why they think there's a lot of potential and I'm excited to see what the company does with sessions. They talk a lot about Teams, but I don't really focus on Teams with my content. So I'm sure there are a lot of great use cases for using sessions with Teams. Now, one of the other things I do wanna to bring to your attention, which is nice to know, is that there is a free plan. And actually the free plan has a lot of great features. So you could try this absolutely risk-free using the free plan, especially if you're an individual or just one or two of you that are running these you could absolutely do that and sign up and start using sessions. If you are watching this video close to when I put it out in September, 2023, there is a lifetime access offer right now. And there's also a 60 day money back guarantee. So if this is something that you want a little bit more from the features, 
then check out that plan. But I would say that for a lot of people, this could be a really great solution. And I know, for example, with memberships, I'm in a few memberships where there is a built-in meeting function. So you can meet right in the community. This trumps that. I think this is a better option than a lot of the built-in, let's just meet on the community platform because of the features that I focus today. And I think that for some people, this really could help you to run more professional, engaging, and seamless workshops, webinars, and courses.